you ask your players to step up and be brave? Uh, do you feel you got that today? <coughs> yeah, I did. I thought it was a, a really good performance from us. In both halves, I thought we we committed. We were brave, as you say. I think um, very difficult team to press high up the pitch, but I think we managed to find a way to get them get to them. Um, really, uh, Anthony Gordon, I think, epitomised that spirit and that determination to be aggressive. I thought his work that he got through was really, really impressive. Um, big, long distance runs. I think he proved that he's he's getting back to his very best in terms of fitness levels. Um, so I was really pleased with him, and then the team backed that up. And it's it's not easy to do, as I say, because they're so good at what they do. Um, but I thought everyone, um, to a man, put in a really good shift today. Pep Guardiola just told us how much he loves and admires you and how your players go about it. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that conversation at the end? Look to be engrossed in a long, deep conversation. I just think Pep's really good for the English-British game. I, I really do. I think he's an innovator. I think he's very good at what he does. The, you know, arguably the best ever that we've seen here, and I think he's taken the game to another level, and that's why it's so good for us all to to go up against him and try and um, find solutions to problems. Uh, I thought it was a really good game today. I thought it was really interesting tactically. I thought we yeah, that's our best display of the season, no doubt about that for me, with and without the ball. And probably the most competitive we've been against Manchester City as well. Even the three-three draw, I felt, I felt we had a little bit more control today than we, we had in that game. Um, so, yeah, really good signs for us. The penalty, obviously, a big moment in the game. The right call from you. Yeah, I mean, Anthony's done well to keep himself on side. It's a, it's a good team move. Um, I think he's clipped, and going at that speed, that's all it takes to go down. Um, just on Sandro Tonali and uh, Kieran Trippier. Was it always in your mind to bring them up? Were they coming off anyway? And it looked like they both came off. Um, the movement didn't appear great, but were they coming off anyway? And how are they? Um, yeah, I think that's how you want a, a player to exit the pitch, really. I and mean, I think that's the difference between this week and last week. Both players had given everything they couldn't give any more, and they had to come off. And, and I always say to the players, "That's how I want you to play." Both players have had obviously different reasons, but broken pre-seasons. Um, you can still see Sandro's got a little bit of fitness work to do to get to his best, so he comes off with cramp and, and Kieran, we, we hope, is cramp. We're not 100% sure at the moment. Um, but really good displays from both players today. Thanks, Nick. Of course, Damien, Luke and Simon. Eddie, you talked there about the challenge you're going up against Pep. When, when you as a coaching team draw up a plan like that and it works or comes off, how satisfying is that? Um, it's, it's never, I never see it as coach against coach, I see it as players against players. So all you're trying to do is give the players the best chance to um, execute how they play against you, their opponent. If you get it wrong, um, it can be very, very difficult against Manchester City because the, the, the level of play, their style of play is, is unforgiving. You make mistakes like we did for the first goal. I mean, we didn't do a lot wrong in that first half defensively. I think they had minimal chances, but the one time we just make a couple of bad decisions, they, they expose you. So. There's still stuff for us to, to grow and learn from and to try and get closer to them uh, in every level, but they're, they're such a long way ahead um, in terms of their style and their development. But I can't fault the players for what they've given today to try and execute that, that plan. And on another day, I think we could have won the game if, if things had swung slightly differently. So uh, a lot to be positive about. Can I just ask you about Lewis Hall? He's still young, relatively inexperienced. When you see a performance like that, does that show why you've had so much faith? Yeah, really pleased with Lewis today because he was. That's a big challenge. He's up against not just his starting opponent, but then the substitutions and fresh players coming on, and he's fatigued late in the game. It's really interesting to see how he adapted to that battle. I thought defensively very good. His positioning, his understanding, because again tactically today we did something slightly different with our back line, and he was pivotal to that. I thought he did really, really well. But also his composure on the ball, he's very, very good technically. I think we can get him involved in the final third more. Um, so there's areas to still improve, but he's got a very bright future if he continues to develop like he is. Thanks, Jamie. Good to Luke. Uh, one of the things Pep said is that your team or Newcastle are impossible to contain for a whole 90 minutes. How do you react to that? Um, I think, uh, and uh, not dismissing the comment, I think. 
it's difficult to contain any team for, for 90 minutes because you know Manchester City play their brand of football and they're only one mistake away with the ball from being counter-attacked and that's why I, yeah, I've got a huge amount of admiration for how they play but I do think we're a difficult team to contain because we do have pace and pace is a key element when you're deep in your own half like we were at times especially towards the end of the game and you've got to have good technical players to find a way out and if you can there's spaces to uh, exploit and you know we did that with our goal a goal is a great example of how we can hurt teams like Manchester City um, but I, I felt we had a goal in us today I felt there was opportunities and really pleased with some of our interplay around the box first half just maybe we didn't get enough bodies in the box I think you said you didn't like what you saw last weekend the team did like what they delivered a lot more to like today. Yeah, and I think that's one of the beauties of this game. You hopefully you always get another chance to put something right and to leave a much better imprint of what you're about. Today we we did do that. We leave the pitch not having won the game, but we leave with our heads held high and a much better representation of what we're about. Now the challenge for us is to find that consistently. Um, and there's no better game to do that with than the cup game we have in midweek. This is a brilliant challenge for us um, to try and progress again in another important cup competition and uh, to set really high standards in terms of attitude. Thank you. Simon? Eddie, Pep's been asked a lot of questions about Rodri being missing and it's almost the implication is they've drawn today because Rodri's not there, which I'm sure is not quite accurate from his perspective. But as an opposition coach, how hard is it to go against City when you know they're going to be at a high level, even though everybody else thinks they'll be affected by one player being missing. Yeah, I don't think we looked at the game like that. I mean, Rodri, yes, is pivotal to what they do, um, but we knew that they would reshuffle, potentially tactically do something different. And I think that was one of the challenges for us today was to try and predict their starting lineup and their system. It's difficult to predict their system at the best of times, but it was even more difficult today without their number six, who glues everything together. So we sort of had a, a, a couple of plans. Um, but I, I think we all make too much of one player. You know, we're missing two number nines today, two centre-halves. Very, very difficult to um, replace those players because they're, they're all unique. But you have to, and you have to find a way to still try and get results. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> it was a, it was a different week than the one we expected because we expected to play on Tuesday. And so we were, we were all preparing for the game on Tuesday, on Monday morning, just before I'm due to come and speak to you. And then, of course, the game's called off. And I think I said in my press conference on Friday, it was probably a good thing for us because it gave us a chance to attack a, a, a clear training week and build our game plan for Manchester City from, from Monday, really. I think that's probably the most we've reviewed a game with the players. So I think they had a lot of time to digest the performance. But I think if if we produce something, it's only right that we analyse it in the correct way, with a view to, of course, producing a much better outcome. And obviously, we've seen last week, but today, you showed that he can go talk to with a man city. Can this team be anything it wants to be, even without having players to it in January? That's very much mindset, my mindset, sorry, that, that we can be whatever we want to be. We are in control of what we deliver. And there should be no obstacle on how we think internally. And we're all working towards that sort of aim, if that makes sense. Okay, great. Yes. And you just quickly on Alexander, he's acting the end of the day. Is there an update there? Will he feature on Tuesday? He definitely won't feature on Tuesday. Um, let's see how he looks for Everton. Uh, of course, there's an international mm -hmm. period coming up after that. So, and he's an international player. So we're, we see the implications of all that, but we'll make decisions during this week. Um, but I think it, well, we know it's not a serious injury, but it's it's a niggly one that um, is obviously preventing a, a key player playing for us. Thanks, Rick. Jordan, and then Dunford. You've seen the Anthony Gordon pretty much 
I've just been, I'm well playing with that from supporters. I thought it was probably been a sort of difficult start to see the yeah, again, brilliant from Warflags, brilliant from, from everybody. Anthony probably needed a, a, a bit of love today. You know, of course, it's difficult for me to love the players all the time. Sometimes you have to give them the opposite um, in order to, to get the right responses. But ultimately, I think it's really important that we love all our players and we allow them to enter the pitch in a great frame of mind, knowing that they're they're free to make the odd mistake, but they're playing in an environment where they feel protected and loved. And I think Anthony's got that. I think Anthony's got that through what he's done here. And today, again, you could see his commitment and the crowd really uh, could see how much effort he was putting into the game. And, and that's all we want to see, and me included. So brilliant from the supporters and a great response from Anthony. Thanks, John. I appreciate what you're saying about um, one player and not having success with one player like Rodri, but how important today was it that your, your players were you know, physically strong and competitive sort of game at times, you almost wonder whether they're going to end and then be left with some challenges going quite close to life. But how important was it that your players had that need without costing their life? Yeah, I think that is a balance that you always need. You need the steeliness, the determination to beat your opponent or try and beat your opponent and give no inch on duels, tackles, whatever the moment is. But you can't lose your discipline. You, you, we, we, one thing we couldn't do today was go to 10 men against Manchester City or any team. So I think we were in control of our motions, but I think we had that bite to us today, so it was great to see. Okay. George Holkin. Hi, George. Firstly, can I just ask you to reflect on the quite shocking news about Darren yesterday? Yeah, um, I think all of us associated with Newcastle really feel for Darren and throw a protective arm around him. Um, devastating news for him and his family. Um, you know, Darren is a, a really hard worker. He wants to do a great job for Newcastle. He's always been um, really committed, um, and just that news put everything into perspective. And we hope he makes a, a full recovery and he's okay. And we'll do everything we can to support him. And it does mean that I mean, there's been a year of change for the club, whether it's Dan leaving or coming in a month and then there's more ahead. How challenging. Yeah, I think that the first thing is Darren's health, ahead of anything else, football related. Now it's about the person and his family. Um, so putting that as the most important priority and then looking at the, the football side, yeah, it's, it's not what we wanted. Um, but I'm sure the club will have its plans in place um, and build that through through time. I know Darren's going to stay and support the club, which is testament again to his character and how he wants to leave his legacy, which is a fantastic thing. Um, and the club will be OK. Thanks, George. Just Scott and then Dominic to finish. Just when you talk about the, the steeliness and, and um, the, the kind of shift, if you like, in, in the way you approach this game maybe last weekend, how important in particular are Bruno and Jordan in the set the talk for that? Because it felt today like those two in particular were right back at the kind of aggression energy levels that they were shown last season. season. Yeah, I mean, you've picked two players and, and, and probably Jolinton is the sort of standard bearer for that. When you, when you think of that type of aspect in our play, he's the one that, you, well, I probably first think of and it needs to be there in his game. But it, it's reflect, it has to be reflected in everyone's game, regardless of their style of play. First thing, you have to work hard and you have to win your tackles and win your headers, which is what we didn't do against Fulham. We were too, too easy to play against. Today, I think Manchester City walk off and go, now nah, they're, they're a team that have committed everything. And that, that's all we want, because then you add the ability to it and we're a match for anybody. Dominic? Anthony Gordon obviously scores today, kissing the bar, showing real passion for the club. What do you think sort of lit that fire in him today? I think a mixture of things. I, I never think it's one thing. I think he, um, he knew he needed a performance. He's playing in a different position, so sometimes that can make you freer. Um, but I think the whole squad knew what we needed to do today. I don't think there was anyone that was left in any doubt uh, about how we needed to perform. Anthony set the tone and that you need your number nine to do that. And the whole team then follows suit. Just finally, any update on his contract? I don't know anything on that. Um, of course, I think we spoke about it being close on Friday. Hopefully it gets even closer.